Hi, I'm Katrina Johnson from New Sky Consulting and you're watching the CATS channel, supporting young people with disabilities to live their best and their brightest So in the lives. up and coming series of blogs that I've got for you over the next six to seven weeks, we're going to dive right into self-direction and self-management of funds. And I'm really, really pleased and honoured and grateful to have what I call a self-management guru with us to guide us through these series of blogs and to talk about self-management. Uh, the wonderful Kathy Reese. So welcome back to week two. And Kathy, now that we know that self-management, self-direction is something that people can do, we're going to turn our attention to the question of you know what's involved in the should I. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot to consider when you're answering that question about whether it's something you should do. So from your experience, what are the types of things that people need to be thinking of when assessing whether they should or shouldn't self-manage fully their funds? Okay. I think to start with, um, it's about thinking about the time, you know, that you'll need to put into, particularly at the beginning, um, you know, to set it up properly, and we'll talk about the foundations of it later on, but certainly to set it up properly, you need time to think about. Yeah. It's sort of, to think about what is this really going to look like? Mm -hmm. um, we, we hear so often about having personal plans for people with disability. It yeah. seems like we have to have a personal plan or a, a plan around the arrangement, if you like. Yeah. Um, what will it look like? What are we trying to achieve? Um, you know, so having yeah. some thinking about that. Um, and certainly also it's being aware that there are a number of tasks that are involved. And it's quite okay for people to say, look, I'm not really comfortable about this, but I'm okay about doing that. So when I'm meaning that, I'm meaning like managing the finances, mm -hmm. um, about keeping a really close tally of the expenditure, mm -hmm. um, making sure that staff wages have been paid, you know, the bills have been paid, um, and it's been done in a, pr you know, in a proper way. Um, if so you're managing finances, you frequently you're also having to do um, reports like to the back to the service or the funding body or to the NDIA saying how did you expend the money and you know for people who fully self-manage it may also be about reporting to the um, Australian tax office you know on a quarterly basis so doing the equivalent of a BAS yes. um, you know a business activity statement so you know people need to be thinking well can I do that mm -hmm. and if I don't know how to do that who do I know who could help me to do that yeah because seriously, when I started this, I didn't have a clue. No. Not a clue. No. And I guess the to-dos and the, fu the function side of things is one of those things that you think, in how you approach anything in life, when you're coming up to something and you think, oh, should I do this? Mm. You're wondering, do I have the skill to be able to do it? And then um, to know that you've got to know what's involved, don't you? And then I guess the thing you, you ask is, well, if I don't know how to do it, then how do I go about getting in the know or getting some help? Hmm. Um, so one of the big ticket items, obviously, in the to-dos and the functions and tasks is um, financial stuff. Hmm. How important is that financial aspect and ability in finances in the whole self-management? Well, clearly, if you're doing all of it, it's very important. You do yeah. need to know where you're, where you're up to with the finances. Um, I mean, seriously, you know, paying staff, for example, I mean, people do want to be paid on a regular basis, uh, and that's quite a reasonable expectation. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to know, well, what's the award for these people? Um, what are the other costs that go with employing staff, for example? Um, so things like uh, superannuation, you need to know that there's going to be superannuation. Um, you know, insurances to make sure that if they're injured, that they're covered. It's quite a biggie, isn't it, insurances? Because it has to be not just that you've got insurance, that you've got the right insurance. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so I guess for myself, when I was looking at this, and as I said to you before, I didn't have a clue really about any of the financial side of things. Yeah. Um, I spoke to my accountant. Now, I was in a position where I could talk to an accountant, but I do know that other people who have taken on that financial responsibility have either talked to friends of theirs who have financial mm -hmm. background, yeah. um, or they've chosen to go off and do um, a small business course at TAFE so that mm -hmm. they can be across some of the responsibilities with that. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's just that people are in a, a relationship with someone who's very good at keeping a tally of things. Yeah. Um, 
So, you know, it de just depends. But so long as you've got a system around it mm -hmm. um, and you've got a separate bank, bank account, yeah. you know, so it's not mixed up in your general um, family business or whatever, um, that seems to be pretty important. Yeah, so that accountability factor mm -hmm. in the self-management arrangement is really important. Yeah, yeah and, and even though like we're going into the NDIA, the reality is that anybody who's been self-directing or self-managing their affairs for many years have been doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, if, even if it's um, uh, being accountable back to the service provider. Yeah. Okay, so because there have been a number of services that have supported people to do this. For example, here in Queensland, we've had people over the last, you know, two, three years actively in that, in that space. Um, but before that, there were many other people who were just supported by their service and they were just reporting the expenditure back to the organisation and the organisation was doing it as part of their quarterly acquittal process. So it would feed into their Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, if there was any mis you know, misjudgment with managing the money, it was usually picked up pretty quickly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but usually there's a plan around, um, you know, what the money will cover. Mm -hmm. And frequently services have an agreement around that. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that under the NDIA, I don't know whether there'll be an agreement with the NDIA itself, mm -hmm. but if you were going to enter into, um, you know, a, a self-managed arrangement where the service provider actually has some role in that, you'd expect that there would be an agreement. Mm, so right. the service would expect that they could see bank statements, that they could see, um, you know, that you're paying staff on a regular basis that there actually are staff there. Yeah. Um, they're pretty important. to be accountable too. <laughs> of course, yeah. of course. And talking about staff, that's probably another big to-do function mm. aspect of self-management. What are some of the staffing side of things that people who self-manage their arrangements will need to be mindful of or assess whether that's something that they, they can do or want to do? I think one of the big issues um, that I hear a lot about in more recent times is that whole issue of um, people having contractor um, personnel yeah. um, as well as the employee model. That doesn't apply in my situation because I've chosen to have employees. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because I've recognised that these people are on a roster, um, they have a position description, I'm instructing them what to do, um, you know, so I'm monitoring, mm -hmm. you know, quite a bit of what they're doing. They, yeah. they just can't turn up whenever they want. Um, there's clear information on the Australian Tax Office website about what's the difference between a contractor and an employee. And it's becoming a much more um, looked at area, isn't it? So yes. if people are doing self-management, they really want to be across this contracting versus employee thing. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. to be aware that there's legislation around that. Yeah. So there's contractor legislation. Um, yeah. So, so there's information out there to help people. Similarly, um, the information on the Fair Work Act um, and also the award. So it's not a case of just agreeing, having an informal agreement with somebody um, to pay them a small amount of money because they've agreed to do it. Say, for example, um, having someone come in at five o'clock on Friday afternoon and leave at eight o'clock on Monday morning and only pay them $300. I've heard of situations like that and mm. you know what, that's not okay. Well, not it okay. doesn't meet a lot of legislation uh, no. when it comes to industrial law, does it? No. No. And no. so that would be something that, that's another thing, people need to be across legislation. Well, to be, aware that, that, to be aware that they have responsibilities and because they're choosing to self-manage and we're in this particular space. Yeah that we are, we have to be accountable and we have, you know, there are other legislations that monitor what we do. That's right. So we're not separate from that. Mm -hmm. We have, if, if we're doing anything untoward, you know, we, yeah. you know, that's what the legislation's there for. It's so there to safeguard people. That's mm. right. Mm. And that's what we want. I mean, we want to make sure that the people we're there to support and serve mm. and family members, um, get that degree of safety. Of course. Yeah. So I guess with, you know, the should I is also about um, the whole employment of staff and management of yeah, staff. Yeah, because that brings with it a whole other plethora of responsibilities. It does. So shall we talk a bit about staffing and that yeah. sort of thing? Yeah. yeah. What's um, been your experience? Oh, well, we've had many years of experience with that. Um, 
my daughter's staff, um, the ones that we have now, have been with her for many years. Um, but it comes back to attention at the beginning, um, helping people to understand why the role is important, um, supporting people to understand what their role will entail. Um, mm. For me personally, I'm very partial to what is commonly called a buddy shift or a share shift or a shadow shift, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. But you know, where people come and um, have the opportunity to, to learn beside someone who knows a lot about what the role is. Um, I found that when you invest time at that, that point, you've also got an opportunity for the person to have a look at the role and see whether they want to be involved in it, whether mm -hmm. they're cut out for it. Also gives the team a chance to see that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, in my situation, my daughter also has the exactly. choice. Yep. Yes, and yep. she will let you know oh, yeah. if she's not satisfied with that person. Yes, which very is much so. another great thing yeah. about it. So I guess the staffing. Um, sometimes people say, "Oh, look, I'm happy to do the the finance stuff, but managing staff. Look, I'll get somebody else to do that." Yeah. And that's quite okay. Mm -hmm. But just make sure it's somebody who does know what they're doing with managing staff. Yeah, because it can become quite complex mm. and um, mm. conflict will inevitably arise somewhere along the line. Yeah. Um, so knowing how to manage that as well. Yeah. yeah, I guess too it's also in the event that you have some sort of disagreement with the staff member or yeah. the staff member's not doing something correctly, you need to make sure that if you're going to like sack somebody for example, that you're doing it according to fair work yeah. um, and those requirements, that you don't just go, hmm, I was going to sack somebody and then have um, an unfair dismissal process come back because it will come back. Yeah. yeah. Or, or so could come saying, back, sorry, it could yeah. come back. <laughs> but what you're saying is that under a self-managed arrangement, you're, the pe people doing the self-managing are just as accountable to those processes and, and legislations mm -hmm. than, say, a service provider is. Yes, I don't yeah. think there's anything really different. So um, they need to understand that and have that knowledge and set in good processes and practices to avoid a lot of you know, and reduce their risk yeah. of having to. I think this is also about having the discussion with the service provider too about well, what are those obligations. Yeah. For example, things like criminal screening, um, that applies to people who self-manage as much as it does to a service, mm -hmm. for example. And yet there's been many discussions over the last few years saying, well, that doesn't apply to families. Well, I think that's not the case mm. um, and certainly there's some legislation that's going on at the moment to say that anyone who's like implementing funding for a person with a disability has a responsibility around those sort of matters. Oh, mm. Safety, mm. just the safety yeah. of a you know, person with a disability. Yeah, I guess, I guess with self-managed sometimes it can feel like you're like a micro business. You yeah, know? it's sounding a, it's, a little bit like that. It sounds like it. Um, People often say, oh, it's too much or it's too much hard work or I couldn't do that. But the reality is it doesn't take a lot of time. Once you've got the system set up and you've got it sorted out just properly to start with, it does tend to flow and yeah. you don't need to spend lots and lots of time on it. No, and there's supports available. That's right. So um, I know that we've talked uh, in our blogs and in our ebook about the other resources that are available to people to get support in the kind of tasks, functions to do. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something that people can go to. I think it's called Pearls of Wisdom. Yes, that's actually on the um, staffing options website. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's that's. A freely available resource and you'll find in each of the um, Australian states that there's lots and lots and lots of information that's available to people. Equally you'll find that in the community there are people with disabilities themselves who've um, developed their own resources. Yep. So for example when I did that project a few years ago I interviewed people who had developed their own Excel spreadsheets and they had very sophisticated ways of you know, like logging in how many hours people had worked and then that did the exact tally of, you know, yeah. how much that was going to cost and, yeah. and that was also the cross-checking and things like that. Yeah. So there are people around who've got tools. Done the leg work. And, and tools are also freely available yeah. as well. And I think that's really important for people to realise. Definitely. Not, you don't not have to have start to from scratch. No, no, no one no. likes to reinvent. No. Unless they've got some fabulous new idea they can <laughs> share with the world. <laughs> Maybe so.
Excellent. Um, what about planning? Planning is another big one, isn't it? Planning supports, monitoring supports, things like that. What, what's been involved? What's been the process involved in that? What do people need to know? Well, I think it's the same sort of thing as what we were saying before, that we often have plans for people with disability. Um, that seems to be very common these days um, and it's not news to anyone that we have those sort of things. It's usually there as a guide um, and even for people with disability who choose not to have a plan, because there certainly are people around who don't want to have a plan, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. there's usually an agreement for how the support is being provided. Mm -hmm. might be that the goals and their aspirations is quite separate to what yeah. um, the support is really all about. But by and large, we still have those um, general yeah. plans for people. Why are they important? I think they're there to guide um, the support staff. Mm -hmm. They keep everyone on track. Mm -hmm. You know, that it's about the person with a disability and what do they want to right. aspire to and yes. achieve. Um, and you can actually walk through with the person to see the achievements. And I think it's very exciting when you see achievements. Yeah, hmm. yeah, excellent. Yeah. So there, there's some of your big top ticket items about what people need to know about the to-dos when you're self-managing your arrangements. So um, it does require a level of skill. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that skill, then you can always seek assistance and support to, to get that. Or you can educate yourself up That's to right. have that level of skill, okay. which is being done. Um, and I think too, you're, you're talking a lot about the fact that accountability is quite relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about taxpayers' dollars and with that comes how, how it's spent and mm -hmm. accountability. So yeah. um, reminding people of that and that's why these tasks and to-dos are so important. That's right. So, um, so I, think, I think that's good. Thank you, Kathy. That's, that's a lot for someone to absorb in just doing the to-dos, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's achievable. Yes, so long as you realise that you can get help. Excellent. Yeah, and you can learn and grow along the way. You don't have to know it all and be perfect at it right from Straight the beginning. Straight away. Because no, no, no. none of us are. No. <laughs> no. Someone, ha we all had to start somewhere. That's right. Um, well, I think that's all for today. And I think next week we get a little bit, um, we dive much deeper into what I know you're very passionate about, which is the foundation work of a very successful self-management arrangement mm -hmm. and uh, what it takes to get those foundations right. Yep. So I'm looking forward to that one. Okay. See you then. Okay. Figuring this stuff out can be a bit overwhelming and that's why Kathy and I have developed a, a little guide and an ebook to help families and people with disabilities navigate their way through this and um, figure out what kind of self-management fund option might be best for you. So I'm going to include the link to the ebook in the description box below. So go ahead and it's free, download that and get started.